Then good evening. A Dallas prostitute murdered by a client was born and raised in Erie. We'll have details of that story next on Newswatch 35. From WSEE Channel 35 Erie, this is Newswatch 35, the weekend report. And good evening. Welcome to Newswatch 35. I'm Scott Bremner. Thank you for joining us. A murdered prostitute with ties to Erie has become the focus of a possible serial killer investigation in Dallas, Texas. 27-year-old Susan Peterson was found in this Dallas suburb last Sunday, shot in the head. Her face had been surgically mutilated by her killer. Peterson grew up in Erie before moving to Texas. It is the second murder of its kind in that area, and it's forcing police to find out details of Peterson's I've life. I've been able to find a home that she lived in or, or any place that would give us a start. Earlier, 33-year-old Mary Lou Pratt was also found murdered. She was also disfigured. Police say the two women knew each other. There is no word yet on any arrests. Slain Erie police officer Richard Burchick has been laid to rest, but the investigation into the night he died is still very much alive. 21-year-old Scott McWilliams of East 19th Street was arrested this weekend, charged with aggravated assault and criminal conspiracy. McWilliams is allegedly associated with the Hoods, a street gang that was firing weapons the night Burchick died. In all, five arrests have been made. 17-year-old Michael Bibbs has been charged with Burchick's murder. More arrests are expected. Federal investigators will be in Cleveland tomorrow, trying to learn what caused a runway crash that killed two cargo pilots. Rescue workers had to fight through the blustery cold to get to the wreckage where an Emory DC-9 cargo plane, working for the Postal Service, flipped over and burned. The force of the crash nearly tore the jet in half. Witnesses say the plane was in trouble trying to take off, Everything but the main runway at Cleveland Hopkins Airport has been reopened. And Colombian police are still searching for a motive after a huge car bomb killed 22 people after seven months of relative peace in the drug war. Nine policemen were killed by the blast, which police think was rigged by Colombian drug lords. The blast ends a period of calm between the government and the drug kingpins, many of whom possess weapons equal to or greater that of the government forces. The blast took place outside a public bull ring. While back home, a local hospital is helping a little girl get the surgery she needs to live a better life. She'll only be in Erie for a short while, but she already has found a lot of friends. Debbie D'Alessio has her story. This is Mikael. The shy 14-year-old was brought to Erie for surgery on her severely crossed eyes because such an operation is not available in Haiti. I believe they actually cut one of the muscles, shorten it, bringing the eye uh, more even, and then sewing it up. Mikhail's teacher and translator says she does very well in school and might like to become a doctor. She's also very excited about seeing snow for the first time, and she's not very worried about the surgery. I think she has a hope also, because my husband, I ask her, are you afraid that you know what you're going to have the operation? And she said, well, she knows that God is taking care of it, and she's not afraid. Dr. David Race met Mikhail while he and other volunteers from the Westminster Presbyterian Church were building a new school in her country. And it was there uh, during a church service that we got to know uh, Mikhail, and uh, we grew very fond of her. I noticed that she was cross-eyed, and uh, Sally and I discussed the fact that maybe we would try to bring her back to uh, have her eyes corrected if possible. Ophthalmologist Howard Manassi will examine Mikhail on Monday and surgery is scheduled for Tuesday. St. Vincent is donating the facilities and the emergency room nurses collected donations to pay for her trip. Mikhail should be back home with her family in Haiti in about a week. Debbie Delasio, Newswatch 35. And when we come back on Newswatch 35, the first soldier from Desert Storm buried at Arlington National Cemetery has ties to Erie. And soldiers from a war gone by gather here to remember. Stay with us. Well, it was a somber experience Friday to watch the first burial at Arlington National Cemetery from Operation Desert Storm. Those are pictures made even more meaningful for people here with word that the family has its roots in Erie. Captain Jack Edwards died when his Cobra helicopter gunship crashed escorting wounded soldiers. His wife Gail was seen in cities across the country as she received her husband's flag. Gail grew up here in Erie, attending Hamilton School before moving out of town. Her grandparents, aunts and uncles still live in the Erie area. Now to the war where two more Americans were killed by friendly fire and the British admitted for the first time that errant bombs may have killed some Iraqi civilians. Dan Rather reports from Saudi Arabia. 
Foreign Minister Tariq Aziz is on his way to Moscow. He traveled to Iran by land, met with Iran's foreign minister, then boarded a plane in Tehran for the flight to the Soviet Union. Aziz is scheduled to have talks in the Gulf War tomorrow with President Mikhail Gorbachev. At the U.S. military briefing in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia today, Marine Brigadier General Richard Neal said two more Americans had been killed, six wounded, by U.S. fire. He said Apache helicopters mistakenly fired on two American desert vehicles, destroying both. The general also denied that any specific date has been set yet for the start of the ground war. Because uh, I don't know the date, and, uh, and I'm not sure, I don't think there is a date. There hasn't been a date. Neal said there have been seven skirmishes along the Saudi border today, all of them initiated by probing Allied forces. Twenty Iraqi prisoners were captured in two of those incidents. The general said when Apache helicopters confronted the Iraqis, they threw up their hands and surrendered. The helicopters then followed behind the prisoners, choppering them into custody. Four U.S. senators visited a Patriot missile battery in central Saudi Arabia today. Senators Warner, Stevens, in a way, and Nunn examined an Iraqi Scud missile and chatted with soldiers manning the Patriot Nunn. battery. Well, so, Senator Nunn said the air war is making good progress, and he's hoping air power will help wrap this up. He says the president will make the final decision on ground war. And 31 amphibious assault ships now have reportedly gathered in a small area of the Persian Gulf in preparation for a possible assault in coming days on Kuwait. Dan Rather, CBS News in Saudi Arabia. Calling soldiers to war isn't an event that's unique to the Persian Gulf crisis, of course. Fifty years ago, these men of the National Guard 1st Battalion 112th Infantry were asked to leave their jobs and families to serve in World War II. Today they mark the anniversary being mustered into federal service, just like they were 50 years ago. They were also thanked for their dedication and service. They were the best soldiers our nation had, and they proved this again and again during the four years it took to win the war. The 112th Infantry Regiment was in it from the very beginning, making Erie County very, very proud. The soldiers saw combat in France, Luxembourg, and Germany. They also played a key role in stalling Hitler's last offensive. Well, the war has sparked a lot of controversy, and those mixed opinions are being shown in Erie not only by protests, but also by art. The Erie Art Museum has opened their newest exhibit, Images of War. The works in many different mediums depict various periods of war. There are also different themes, from the tragedy of war to its honor and glory. 72 artists had just two weeks to submit their work. They will be on display until April 21st. Well, for President Bush, it was supposed to be a quiet weekend away from the pressures of his job. But when you're the president, the Persian Gulf crisis can follow you anywhere. Longtime peace activist John Shukart was arrested for twice interrupting church services the Bushes were attending. Shukart denounced the war, claiming many casualties are children and adding that the country has no right to drop the most explosives mankind has ever seen. He's cooling his heels in jail, charged with disturbing the peace. Well, back home in Erie, boating is one of our favorite warm weather pastimes. But now Uncle Sam wants to make money off of our fun. Boaters are trying to shoot the idea out of the water. Debbie D'Alessio explains. Soon these boats will be sailing in Lake Erie, and soon their skippers may be paying more to own them. Congress tacked a new boating tax onto the 1991 budget. The larger the boat you own, the more you'll pay. It's a graduated tax from uh, small boats on up to big boats. I say from $25 up to $100 per boat would have to be paid every year. It would go into the general fund. Like I said before, if it went to the Coast Guard for Coast Guard services, I don't think it would bother us in the least. There is a chance that the bill could be sunk. A congressional committee will soon study the possibility of repealing the tax. Ross thinks the move is a direct result of letter-writing campaigns and petition drives. And he'd like voters to keep that kind of pressure on Congress. And I'd like to see a lot of people call in or write letters. And let's fin I'd like to see it finished up and get it repealed for next year anyway, so we can go back to our boating and have fun. <laughs> If the repeal isn't acted upon soon, boaters will probably have to pay the tax this year. But the government hasn't indicated when boaters will have to pay or how it will be implemented. Debbie Delasio, Newswatch 35. That looks good. Well, I guess it's too early to get the boat out of the water just yet. But warmer weather will make Erie look a little more like spring. Just don't tell these folks they may not have that much time to relax. Weather's next. Stay with us.